Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, to Vulcan Deckmasters Week 1, Day 1. I'm Noxious. I will be your host throughout this tournament. With me, Dart, today, uh, going to be co-casting five matches. Uh, how are you doing, mate? I'm doing well. I'm excited for some awesome games today. We have some great players, half of them who are invited to this tournament, half of them who actually made it through qualifiers. Um, so we really get to see a good, I guess, mix of players. It's going to be really exciting. Yeah, not just invitationals, basically. We have a lot of people who qualified, uh, and as a result, they'll be pitting themselves up against some of the bigger names out there. You, like, There's a few people you will uh, you will watch the matches of whom you will probably not recognize because their names are, I would say, fairly new on the scene. And even some people who are in the top 100 ladder um, at the end of pretty much each season, their names aren't necessarily known, right? Like, there's a player in the tournament called Bunny Muffins, and I don't think many players have heard of him, perhaps some in the pro scene or in the high level. Uh, ladder ranking, but it hasn't been seen too much you know, in tournament events, so mm -hmm. definitely uh, a lot of good players are to look out for. Now, do you want to talk about the format of this tournament? We have a little bit of an interesting change of pace compared to the normal uh, BlizzCon Conquest best of five strategy. Yeah, that's right, because in fact, uh, Vulcan Deckmasters, instead of just going for best of three, let's say, Conquest format, which is also fairly common, or best of five with a possible ban, instead we're getting a best of three three with one ban. So those matches are all going to be best of three conquest. Each player brings three classes. One of them gets banned, which makes it, I guess, um, and maybe I'm wrong on this and you can correct me, easier to target specific archetypes with your lineup. I completely agree. Now that's my next question for you. How do you think the ban in a best of five will go on to best of three after the ban conquest format changes how one goes about uh, building their deck set? I mean, again, like Conquest, I think has been, I wouldn't say figured out, but a lot of people pretty much agree that the best strategy, like if you want to play in a tournament, you have to exploit the format. Whatever format it is, you want to exploit it. Um, obviously, you exploit the metagame, but exploiting the format is also a super important part of tournament play. And Conquest is more easily exploitable than perhaps other formats, whereby if you just target one specific of archetype, uh, you bring two similar decks, and one of your opponents has a bad match, up against yours, uh, it's much easier for you to go away with the win. Now, I completely agree. Now, thinking about it, what do you think are going to be the heaviest banned classes throughout this tournament today? I want to say Warrior, but at the same time, um, some deck, like it's still c considered probably one of the better ones. But I guess you could take against it, and as a result, mm -hmm. let it sit in someone's lineup and take two decks that beat it. Although, you know, good luck with that, but take two decks <laughs> that beat it consistently, or at least as consistent as possible, and just let it be there. So you take out whatever matchup is bad for your remaining two decks that you think are going to stick around, and you could take this. I mean, it does seem fairly uh, rational. Now, I, I do have to agree that Warrior will probably ban quite a bit. But I'd have to guess that Warlock and Hunter might be targets throughout the tournament quite a bit. Because a lot of times if you do ban a deck like Hunter, it allows you to play the really, really greedy Handlock that's out there in order to counter the Patron build. So you might right. not have to tech against it as much. Yeah, exactly. So you target, like, if you can target Warrior, you're going to be in a great spot since you have to expect people will be bringing it. But, you know, that's the good thing about Hearthstone, I guess. Even with a deck as prevalent as Patron on Ladder, you will see tournament metagames be slightly different. And some players just don't care necessarily to bring what's uh, what's been considered for a while now probably the best deck. I mean, how long has it been since we've had a deck that was as dominant as Patron? Like, how um, long has it been? Since Life Coach came up with Hunter when it was Unleash the Hounds was two mana. Long, yeah, that's long time been ago. a long time ago. Basically, that's that's actually pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Now, I mean, I remember there was a time with Miracle Rogue was good, but never quite as good as um, Unleash Hunter was <laughs> for a while. But Patron has taken it to another level. And what's interesting is that initially when I saw Patron, I was like, oh, cool, we're getting like a Freeze Mage-like deck for Warriors, where you have to plan, you know, seven turns ahead of time. I'm exaggerating a bit, but that's pretty much how you play the deck. You have to really plan out your turns um, and try to play as optimally as possible. It's sometimes forgiving, but it is a very combo-heavy deck, which I really loved. But after <laughs> seeing it for so long, I, I would be happy if something came up um, that could consistently stop it dead in its tracks. Now, I have to disagree with you slightly. It's I personally am a okay, fan of decks like that, like the original Miracle Rogue, that requires a lot of skill. Patron is not a deck that right. a new player can pick up and be good at it. It's one that requires hundreds upon hundreds of hours of practice to really perfect. And even then, some of the best players in the world, such as Zixo, the rat who created the... Um, 
I don't even remember the card name. That eventually he got rid of it. But he like he uses slams while people like Zelay use loot hoarders. You have the best players in the world arguing about the perfect list right now, and there's no consensus as to what's the best way to do it. It's because even the pros are struggling to figure out how to play this death deck in the perfect way, and I love that. It keeps the game fresh. It requires uh, there are turns where you have to count, do so much math that even life coach right. oh life coach would fail miserably at it with how <laughs> slow he is. But <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, there's uh, there's some truth to be said. I got like I mean it is a very skill demanding deck. I'm not gonna say the opposite, um, but the reward that comes with it, like once you've reached a certain threshold, the little edges matter. But you know, in a card game, the edges will matter in the long term, but in the short term, they might not necessarily. And I feel like sometimes patron war can steal games away, uh, just completely out of nowhere with very easy plays. Other times, of course, well then again, I guess it's always a little more complex than face hunter, but. Um, it's probably like the archetype and the feeling of it really appeals to me but I wonder if there'll be something to nullify its dominance for a while I'd have to expect that Blizzard does not want to actually nerf the deck because if you make even a small change with Patron then all of a sudden the deck gets blown out of its existence so I would have to expect them to have something in store for the next expansion maybe something like another MC tech type card that kind of punishes someone for having a large board like that Maybe just some more yeah. three damage AOE. Maybe something that does like a full board silence. Like Master's Spell is actually a good effect against Patron, but at the same time, it's terrible versus everything else. It's so, so costly, you don't want more right? Like that. Well, it's pretty okay against Zoo, but it's very costly for what it does against a lot of the decks, so you can't really use it. Um, all right. That being said, guys, we're gonna move on to the first match. We're gonna be uh, looking today at uh, five matches. The first one will be Gara versus Orange. We'll have Show versus Surrender afterwards. Strive Crow versus Thoida. Uh, some of you may recognize his name. He's been around actually more recently <laughs> than before, uh, which is pretty cool. Kalento versus Kuvdon, which I believe is uh, one of the players who qualified, and Trump versus Herudra. I do not know that player. If you do, Dart, um, you know. No, give me some info because I don't know Harudra at all. So I think every match a day is one of the invited players versus one of the qualified players. So right, which may it. be a little bit which may be a little bit surprising to viewers when we have a match like Gara versus Orange. So for our first one, it right. turns out that Orange, a pro player on Team Archon, made it through the entire European qualifier to get into this tournament himself. It, it really goes to show that these pro players aren't just for show; they actually know how to play the game and are good at it. Yeah, they might get invited, but that doesn't mean they don't. They can't just go through the qualifiers. In fact, I think Sixo, I think is my best example of a player um, at this point who just powered through qualifiers uh, in the past and he eventually made his way into pretty much one of the top teams at the moment, Archon. So definitely, yeah, those players are going to be. I mean, they're going to be showing some sick games today, and I'm hoping there's a bit of diversity. I I can't wait to see. Um, Gara's shaman list because he tends to always bring shaman uh, with little twists sometimes, sometimes more of a standard mid range, sometimes he brings mechs. Whatever it is, he feels like he's very, very creative. I find Gara to be maybe sometimes even on the overly creative side. Mm -hmm. um, what with all the, uh, the weird texts. It's, so uh, we should be, be getting weird. into the first game right now. Taking a look at classes, Orange brought Mage, Hunter, and Warrior while Gara brought Hunter, Shaman, and Warlock. So on Orange's side, Gara banned his Warrior, while on Gara's side, or on Orange's side, sorry, totally mixing this up right now, Orange's yeah, Warrior Orange's was banned warrior by Gara, is banned. Yeah. while Gara's Warlock was banned by Orange. Right, exactly. So we're going to be looking at a interesting lineup. You mentioned that Orange's uh, uh, targeting might have been, oh, a little bit of a problem here with the Hearthstone Spectator mode. But you mentioned, like, after keeping Mage and Hunter, uh, you think he's targeting a warrior deck? If he's playing mid-range Hunter, I'm guessing, or is that possible? So here, here's the question I have from Orange banning Gar's Warlock. Um, he did have what looks like right now Freeze Mage and Hunter, two decks that you'd reasonably pretty be pretty comfortable against Warlock. So I am a little bit surprised that he wanted to ban that class from Gar's side. He must have been expecting Shaman, and if I have to say something, I think Ma Freeze Mage against Shaman is very, very strong. And uh, the Hunter, as well, can do pretty well. So maybe Orange was just targeting Shaman, knowing that Gara is a player who's known for that. Do we see that, the same that thing right now? And yeah, we saw a... Is that a Deathlord in a Hunter deck? 
Oh yes, you haven't heard about that, have you? Okay, let me explain to you what's going on. Snake Trap is making a comeback, and alongside it, Death Lord is coming up. Um, <sighs> I was surprised by this because I was playing an aggressive rogue list on ladder recently, and it turns out I played three to kill early game minions, and then somehow this Death Lord comes out at a random time, and I just I didn't know what to do. It took me by surprise, um, and it might. Wait, what just is take happening with this game right surprise. now? <laughs> I don't even know. I can't even tell you. This is just uh, new territory I, for me. I've got to say, it'll be very interesting to see how this affects a Freeze Mage versus Hunter matchup, which is already kind of an interesting and finicky kind of uh, game to play from both Yeah, it's very sides. volatile. Definitely. It is a mid-range Hunter, though. I think. How do you think mid-range does uh, compared to phase against Freeze Mage? I think it really requires on um, the hunter curving out. Um, Freeze Mage mm -hmm. has difficulty dealing with cards like Shredder, like High Mains, because not only when they clear the board with the freezes, they still have Ew. a good amount of expected damage following them the following the turn after. So if the Freeze Mage is able to get some early board presence with Acolytes, Loot Hoarders, um, Mad Scientists, they might be able to pressure the hunter to work on clearing their minions instead of actually going face like they're originally supposed mm. to do. So yeah, and Gar is actually thinking thinking about it. Like he, as you mentioned, he has to clear, but he doesn't quite feel like it, knowing that the longer this goes on, the more orange yeah. is likely to be able to set up, you know, heavy unmitigatable protection. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be really tough to go through the late game. Like once blizzards start falling down, Nova Doomsayers, you need to keep your owl for that. But you really don't feel like it, so Exactly. I was going to say, do, do you think you want to wanna keep your Owl heal here and hold it for a Doomsayer, or would you prefer to stop either a trap oh, or another Oh yeah, card? definitely. The end cannot be coming, is all I'm saying. If you're playing Hunter against Freeze Mage, you cannot let a Doomsayer go off. Um, I think usually that's where things just go awfully wrong for you. Very often. <laughs> Especially with the Death Lord, I mean, that's just worse. It just goes... It's even worse now with the Death Lord on the board. This is this this is really really dangerous. Good thing Gara's got that owl because that would otherwise be a really good uh, good doomsayer for Orange. But I, but I have to say the owl isn't that great here because it does hurt Gara's curve. It's either going to force him to use Unleash the Hounds or Hero Power instead of actually developing the Sledge Belcher, which he obviously wanted to do. I think you can <laughs> I think you can safely owl face right like with Kill Command face. Totally you would kill play. Command Face at this point? <laughs> no, I would not. Uh, I just give. I, I mean, it's amusing to me because uh, it almost feels like a play. It almost feels like a play. What I'd I like, be though, very is. Very uh, considering. What, what I'm surprised about sorry, is that orange. To curve, just to get those two extra knives, and then you silence off the Doomsayer. That and how often does Unleash the Hounds gain value in this matchup? Um, you automatically get a minimum. One time, of about it. Exactly, you automatically get the two damage off of it, but because of the pings, you might actually get more than that. So I think it actually has more value right now than the hero power does. Just for the, the drawback uh, about that is uh, you're not getting. I mean, what the problem with that is you're running into Blizzard right now, no matter what. Like you pretty much know it from having played the matchup 25 times. No, well, it is an ice block. The ice barrier can be played unless he's playing some kind of funky merit deck. That's going to be. Ice block already developed, and this is probably as good as it's gonna get as far as secrets. Mm -hmm. The high main comes do, out. Oh god! I do have to mention that I think Gara actually wanted the ice barrier to come out because that is the card that I think swings the uh, hunter versus freeze mage matchup towards the freeze mage. It's just a three mana healing touch, which anyone who's played hunter hates to play against a druid with Fears, healing touch. Yeah. So it's the most aggravating feeling in the world. Alright, he's gonna kill the Death Lord and we'll see if a Doomsayer can come out of this one. I mean, how, how many minions does he really have in there? Oh, oh wow, and there it is! <laughs> oh, and I guess that's gonna have to be an Unleash the Hounds to clear it, right? Oh yeah, this is, a, this is even a better Unleash. I'm surprised if we could actually see one that's better than what we saw earlier. Or do you just start punching face really hard? No, no way, there's no way. Was there anything that could have hurt or to come out there? Obviously, Mad Scientist wouldn't have been bad, Loot Hoarder would have been the bad. Alex Straza would have been, been good. Awful. Well, I, then again, not really, because the hunter then has to answer her. Exactly. Is it that bad? Yeah. So I, I think that's why Orange was very happy to actually run it in and try to kill off the uh, Death Lord there to see what he could get, because I don't think he had any choices that would hurt him. 
Mm -hmm. Well, Unleash comes out, and I think the Doomsday will get taken out. There's no reason not to. Oh, picks up a Frostbolt, Fireball, and Pyro. Still very far from the Alex Straza turn, unfortunately for him. So, the lethal is not anywhere close for Orange. I think it's the lack of card draw he has right now. Um, only have five cards in hand, being forced to use a Frostbolt on the Death Lord instead of being able to save it for a face on the Hunter side. Puts him in kind of a scary position. And Gar decides not to pop Iceberry in case the second one gets developed behind it, which I think is a pretty sound play. That way you're not risking the uh, mage getting off two healing touches in your matchup. Wow, is that 12, 15? That's pretty scary. So, what do you think about doing... Hmm. Fireball, say, Fireball, next turn Archmage Frostbolt. Exactly, and then Pyroblast into Fireball. He really has to count the Hunter's potential damage throughout those three turns to see if he could actually take him out. Yeah, he'd need to find, I think, a second Ice Barrier next turn or an Ice Block in order to justify this play. Um, it may still be the best play, but I think this is a point where you are definitely considering an all-in. Mm -hmm. I mean, because Archmage will at least soak up some damage from your opponent. He will have to trade into it at least or deal with oh, it exactly. in some manner. You might opt to even actually loot Hoarder Fireball. Wouldn't be a terrible play. And he does go for it, so he's going to try to find a secret for those plays. That's delaying like the kill this. by a tiny margin, but not really, because anyway, his turn 10 would have been... Uh, turn like turn 11 or 10 would have been, you know, Fireball from Archmage Antonidas. But I do like that. That's a pretty well-planned out play. So I think this is the one time in the history of Hunter that he wants Leoc over Huffer. Oh, man. Oh, wait, maybe... Wait, just kidding. Maybe I not. It's the same that. thing, right? Because <laughs> you want to run the you want to run the one one into the two one, so you actually do. Yeah, exactly. So you, you really do want Huffer to get that extra one damage. You know, it's it's a, it's a big deal. I expect to see a Huffer, an Eagle Horn Bow, and a Hero Power. What do you think? I believe in Leoc. Oh, there's oh, the Leoc. Oh man, there it is. So he's counting up his damage to see if he can pop block, which at 11, 12, 13. Close the ice barrier. That's 23. He needs 23 damage right now to get it. Which, unfortunately, he actually does not have on him. So I think he's yeah. just going to do which as much gives damage. Orange a lot of uh, breathing room. Yeah, this gives Orange so much breathing room here. Having one more turn before problems actually start occurring. Now, what do you think about... Okay, so the trap down right now... Would that be Snake Trap? It could be. Oh. In a deck with Death Lords, I would absolutely expect it. Um, oh, he does find oh, the Ice Block for the next block. turn. That is a crazy draw. Archmage with Frostbolt, and then a good play in the next two turns with Fireball Ice Block to Pyro or something. Oh, God. Now, this is good as it could get for him. Do you Frostbolt the High Main, or do you just go face? Because if you do that, it puts him at 21. The following turn... 21, um, but you can pop yep. your block, right? So... Yeah, you do Fireball, Ice Block, Ping, and then Pyro. I guess you're going to be one damage short. It depends whether or not you use the face with to kill Archmage, which you probably won't. Mm -hmm. I mean... Uh. I think the major question right now is if he freezes face, will he be able to pop him and... I, I think oh, Emperor might be a... Yeah, I mean, Emperor forces a response, doesn't it? Does he just go full face, or does he actually start clearing? Yeah, full face. There it is. Calculating that if you have, if you add up the fireball from Archmage and the Pyro and the Frostbolt, you're going to be able to get a lethal in the very near future. So I think he's actually and the snake trap cannot be played. A an ice lance to finish this off. Because next turn, well, well, you can go Archmage Frostbolt Ice Block next turn. So I think what he wants to do is Archmage, Ice Block, Frostbolt, Ice Lance. To shoot. And that should give him the damage with the double fireball to finish the game. If he pulls it off, that's going to be a crazy top deck. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, let's look at how many cards he has. Orange right now only has 12 cards left in his deck. With two Ice Lances, he has about an 18-19% to 19 chance of drawing into it. So in this position, that's actually not that bad of odds to take a, a little less than a 1 in 5 chance to win the game. 
when otherwise you're really in no position to actually defeat Gara in this first game. So here we go. I think it does come down to the ice. Oh, and he does not get it. Um, he has one more turn to get it, does he not? So Archmage... Uh, he has to play Archmage for Oswald with Ice Block, doesn't he? Oh, wow. You know, I, I'm i a little... Uh, that's pretty all in, but it's gonna... He can't heal up. He's guaranteed to get his Block Pod by the Hero Power. Mm -hmm. So... And then Fireball Ping isn't enough. You can't use the Frostbolt when you only have one draw left. Mm. I think that will Although, do it for in this game. If you fire... No. Yeah, I, I, th I really thought it was going to go for the Archmage Ice Block for Osbolt and hope that he finds uh, something semi-relevant next turn. Although I don't think it would have mattered in the very end. He, he had too much how, mana. Or he didn't, he didn't yeah. have enough mana. Archmage 6 plus Fireball 3 plus Ice Block is 2. So he actually no, wasn't able to get that full combo. Yeah, with Frostbolt he would have... Uh, would have been able to do it, but... But the issue, again, the issue with Frostbolt is then the following turn, you no actually lands. have no chance of lethal, because he couldn't activate the Ice Lands. So I think the play there, he really took the only chance he had to win. He had a little less than a 1 in 5, and unfortunately he actually wasn't able to get it. Is there even a way to win if he goes Arcane Little Elect into the double Ice Lands? Still not. Well played. Well played. And the guy with the preemptive well played, which I guess uh, Orange was expecting at this point. Frost Nova. Oh well, a freeze mage losing port? versus mid range hunter. Yeah, let's do that. You ping yourself in the face. I think that's the very honorable play. You could no, you, you, you have to pyroblast yourself in the face. That's the only way. You're to right. Minus line. That's actually really. He doesn't want to reveal the pyroblast because you know Guard doesn't know there's a pyroblast in the deck. Because well, it's true. freeze mage. Malagos right. could be running the Malagos right. version. Mm -hmm. So Gara will take game one with mid-range Hunter over Orange's Freeze Mage. Um, what do we have to expect the next game? Um, well, I mean, the Conquest format, basically whoever wins with the deck is out. Gara's got a Shaman coming up. So Shaman against Freeze Mage is a really uphill battle for the Shaman, I won't lie. I think it's one of the toughest matchups to win because the Mage will deny your board very frequently. Uh, like, I don't, I don't remember the last time I could actually... Uh, Stabilize against the Freeze Major Shaman. Like, I'd have now, to get you, really lucky with the Hex of the Do you expect Orange to go Hunter? Because that's an obviously an advantageous uh, move by Orange. That way he can see what type of Shaman he's up against before using his Freeze Mage. I think that makes quite a bit of sense. Because if you can, it, like, both of those decks have a good matchup. Hunter and Freeze Mage are both pretty good against Shaman. So, whichever mm -hmm. one you go for, uh, at best, you're getting scouting information. Uh, I mean, at worst, you're getting scouting information, and apparently Orange is running a Face Hunter deck. Uh, I mean, I see a Glaive Zuka, an Arcane Golem, and a, you know that that seems uh, like a Now, tell. once again, with all the different types of uh, hybrid hunters right now, we cannot say for sure that this is Face Hunter. Um, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's do that. All right. <laughs> I mean, Proto Proto oh, Hypes Harrison are Jones. Ooh, I wonder how that'll, especially with two uh, weapons in Orange's hand right now, that could affect this game. And Golden Healing Totem is magnificent. So I think this Feral Spirits has to come down at this point. It's going to completely contest the current board state and Orange put, is gonna Garner, be forced to put Orange in a little bit of an awkward situation. He can clear the board, but he's not going to be able to develop anything behind it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So going on to the Hunter's turn, his options obviously are Glaive Zuka to clear or Eagle Horn Bow, and I personally like the Eagle Horn Bow at this point. What do you think about his choice to pass the turn here? I mean, I guess ultimately it doesn't matter that much. Because the, like, the Shaman is locked on spells, the only thing that it does enable, I guess, is an Earthshock play. Which usually isn't that big of a deal. Um, I'm quite okay with it. It's just a bit odd because now he loses the bow. He's gonna have to play another weapon on the back end. But he does get a really good turn though, because that is uh, he's got a trap up, another mad scientist if it gets popped. Do I we know if this is explosive already or not? 
I don't think Gara really has any idea. Um, Orange has not shown any indication that he is running face on her. Um, I think the Worgen Infiltrator would be the biggest giveaway of that. So can you confirm that it is face on her? I, I, I'm venturing to say so. I mean, as, after seeing Worgen Infiltrator, I'm going to go on a limb here and just state it for a fact. I think at this point, I do have to agree with you. No matter how much I hate doing it, <laughs> Noctis, you are correct. This is face on her. All right. Well, let's see if it has the mark. Uh, I guess Shaman it very often does. Oh, it gets a really good hit here. And he's clearing. Is there anything wrong with this face hunter? Huh. I guess one way to get out of this, to be thrown out of the game is a flame tongue told him somehow. But now I, I gotta say I am a little surprised that he went face with that two damage instead of fully clearing board. It, it just gives Gara the option to have a defender of Argus right now, which even though he does have a mad scientist to deal with and one three taunt pretty easily, it can still be a really big pain to get through it if Doc Gara finds a way to clear his board on top of it. This is gonna be a Harrison Jones turn every time. There's an, like you've already lost the the bow value. Right. I think it's going to be a lightning storm here. You can clear the entire board without taking yeah. any more damage from it. Oh, that's right. You could actually pop it a Grog Biter on the minion that heals itself. And then the following turn, he will be left with five mana, so he won't be able to play his Fire Elemental, but he can use his Harrison Jones if Orange decides to keep this weapon for any reason. Do you, do you think he'll keep it? I really don't think it's very likely. I agree with that. I think he's going to go full face. Yeah, the after killing the first on the arcane golem, hero power, and just face, face, face. That's ten damage already. That's like if you count it that way. Basically, he's six turns away from just hero power death, which very frequently is enough for the shaman to die because they tend to whoa a dark iron dwarf. That is actually a very helpful card right now. That is absolutely cool. I don't think I've seen this card in forever. It's been it's been a long time since I've seen Dark Iron Dwarf in just about any deck. And I actually did make a mistake saying that Garwa 5 mana. I didn't realize that he was going on to turn 8. So he does have enough mana to use the Fire Elemental. So what do you think about that choice right now? Would you Fire Elemental the 4-2? I draw a Biter, Dark Iron Dwarf, I think. Yeah. I think Rock Bitering, the, rock biting, sorry, the Dark Iron Dwarf lets you play Fire Elemental next turn where you're really going to need it. Because right now you're getting a pretty decent board with a 4-4 and you're clearing two minions instead of just the one. And denying board presence at this point where you're like six turns away or six hero powers away from death Ooh. is very important. So uh -oh. here we go. The Knife Jugger Unleash the Hounds. That is going to be huge against the Shaman in the upcoming few turns. I think Orange is going to be very patient with it. Wait for Gar Garar to develop a board and maybe even just kill him with the knives, the knives off the Knife Juggler. I mean, it's not even unrealistic to believe that Orange is going to just hero power pass next turn as well. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even be that surprised. I mean, of course, I'd be tempted to just juggle and unleash. I mean, it's always guaranteed three damage to face without counting the knives and two from your already set up explosive trap and two from hero power. So, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for Orange to catch up. He's going to have to have some, uh, I mean, for Gar to catch up. It's going to be like a crazy heal bot. He needs a heal bot, and I think that the fact that he played the Azur Drake there instead of a Fire Elemental on a Totem for the Taunt shows that he does have a heal bot in this deck, and he's just trying to dig for it. Is there ever a reason not to go for the Unleash here? I would have been. I would have thought about this a little bit more and been very tempted to hold on to it. Um, what if Gar runs for one know, more double Bloodlust? Oh god. Double Bloodlust? I think yeah, that he just concedes. Oh. Gar just gets out of the game, uh, realizes, you know, this matchup is super lopsided at this point. I can't really do much about it. So Orange is going to take the game with the Hunter. And they're going to be one to one. Both Hunters are having one already. So that's going to leave Shaman versus Freeze Mage again back to. Uh, back so to going really into awkward. The, exactly. So going into the final game of the series, who do you think has the advantage in this matchup? I think Freeze Mage has it by a long shot. Like, I, I think it's not even close, to be honest. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think there's a way for 
for Shaman so, to, uh, I mean, to win this. Or maybe, I, go, maybe go, I'm being over dramatic, probably. Going back to old time Shaman versus Freeze Mage, this is one of my favorite matchups. It really came down to a few things. And by a few things, I mean one thing. And that one thing is Doomhammer. Yeah. If you so, could actually get through the. Like, the amount of recurring damage from that was just crazy. Exactly. And because of what we've seen from Gara's list, I do not think he's running Doomhammer. It just doesn't seem like um, kind of a deck kind of a deck build that would be running the card, and therefore I would actually have to give this uh, advantage to Orange here. Well, Gar's got a pretty decent hand regardless. Uh, the Defend of Argus could be played if he felt like it. Not obviously very necessary, but it could be very useful if he decided to go on it. The problem with doing that is that the earlier you pop the egg, the more vulnerable you are to Doom uh, Doomsayer, that is. Which I guess could weigh in in your considerations of plays. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you think about his choice to actually use Argus on the egg there instead of actually just doing the Shredder? Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's it's making you weaker to Doomsayer, whereas the Pilot of Shredder makes you stronger later against Doomsayer. So I guess it could balance out. It's just a bit odd. I would have probably played the Shredder, but he wanted to get rid of that Loot Hoarder for a weird reason. Mm -hmm. I don't think there was any hurry there. Like it's not it, Acolyte of Pain. Maybe I would have you know hurried to kill it in some manner, but Loot Hoarder not exactly the biggest threat. So this is really going to show um, Orange's experience against Shamans. Um... He needs to expect that Doomsayer will never get off. It's just not a card you expected to when Shaman's have actually <laughs> four cards to counter yeah, it. Right. Two hexes, two earth shocks, and really any damage from hand that Shaman's always have, such as Rock Biter Weapon, sometimes Lightning Bolt now, or even Crackle. So Doomsayer is just a dead card. It it absorbs a little bit of Gar's mana, is really all you can expect it to do. Yeah, Gar's uh, hex on the Mad Scientist here is really good because Orange hasn't disclosed. Uh, like any card draw engine so far, if he had Acolyte of Pain, it would have probably fallen out or earlier. Which, as a result, maybe Gar is thinking, hey, if I can deny the secret draws, I might be able to weave in enough damage that I can take the game against Freeze Mage. So taking a look at Gar's hand right now, it looks like he has all the cards he could ever want to uh, be up against a Freeze Mage. The Shredder, the Doctor Boom, the Earthshock, and then he has the Asterisk to keep cycling, which is really all he could ever want. I am going to have to... Um... To withdraw my words when I said I don't see how a Shaman wins against Freeze Mage, this type of hand is probably what makes it happen. Maybe. Mm -hmm. There's a chance now. There's actually a chance. And they, actually, yeah. look, looking back at this, this Cone of Cold is uh, not going to be very nice for Gara. It's going to be a bit of a pain. And then I'm guessing he would... Ooh, do you, what do you think about him deciding to use the Doomsday or just using a ping here? I would I have pinged set up a better Blizzard, but we'll see exactly what happens. I do have to mention, I'm not sure if Orange was thinking about this, but using it against the Shaman's turn 6 is huge, just by being able to deny a possible Fire Elemental. Oh, well, Shredder's... I mean, actually, I think Shredder makes a lot more sense than Hero Power or Haunted Creeper. Because it doesn't die to Blizzard. It dies to Flame Strike, but they both do. And you get a slightly mm -hmm. bitter minion, I get a bigger minion by playing the Shredder. Not a... You know, massive consideration, but... Or is he thinking of getting Healing Totem to perhaps get out of range of Blizzard even further with what he's already got on the board? Couldn't fault him for that thinking. Wow, Sweet. this is starting to look very scary. Mm -hmm. No secret sub for Orange, so the moment damage starts coming in and he doesn't have a freeze, this is going to start hurting very, very badly. Oh, and the Bach Dr. Boom to follow this up is going to be painful. I can imagine I like to play Dr. Boom as a Lepronome very often against Freeze Mage. <laughs> oh, the Earth Shock! This is... This is absolutely devastating. I, that I that think Azure Drake is killing it. Oh god. Do you? I, I think you you can't not boom against a freeze mage, especially when you have an alloc here to I would, I would play Earth for some Shock. extra burst damage. Oh man, I would play. Oh man, maybe you're right. Maybe maybe I'm just biased, but that secret denial would have just been absolutely crazy. It, it would have been very upsetting in terms of orange position, but I don't think it was the best play there. Um, and I, I like how Gara thought about it. Um, I'm glad he didn't snap play Doctor Boom because it's a really big consideration that you want to think through. Right. 
to do. Well, he's gonna find he's gonna try to find a doomsayer on the opponent's side of the board. But I guess worst case scenario you can always try the blizzard. I mean uh, I mean I like you will blizzard either way, but Ping Blizzard here is most likely. Oh he doesn't even go for the shredder pop. I'm disappointed. Oh. Oh maybe he'll I, find a yeah. doomsayer that way. Nope, it's a snow chugger. Oh, and both bombs hit face and not the doomsayer. That is not what he wanted there. But I, I, I have to say, I do agree with the fact that he may have wanted to ping the Shredder there. So that way he could have frozen that last little minion. Yeah, whatever came out of it would have also been frozen. Because he could have probably killed the 4-4 four, four in the following turn with a very, very easy ping. But Orange is out of cards at the moment, which is not a position you want to be in as a freeze mage. Um, he finds a bit of a card engine, but it's almost too little too late. So, do you think you just go balls to the wall, Alex Straza, hope your opponent can pop block, which currently on board he cannot. He can do 13, 15 damage, so it requires a Shaman to have 4 damage in hand to pop this Ice Block. Otherwise, he'll be able to Pyroblast and follow it up with a Frostbolt. Ice yeah, he might actually be able to take off. it. This is, uh... Wow, Gara needs to find again. Nope, he only has a 2 extra damage, which just isn't enough. Well, he's got four if you count the Dark Iron Dwarf on Alakir, I guess. Oh, you're right. That's enough. That's, that's actually just enough. Good catch. I never even thought about that. Mathematics brought to you by Noxious. But here's the issue with that. It leaves an Alex Straza up. Yeah. Well, does it matter? Because your, your guy's got a ping, right? So the, the only way for... Uh, Orange to go through that would have to ping and fireball it, which means you're not taking it in the face. That's true. And ping fire. Let's see. Can you ping fireball? Fi nope. Fire, yeah, I think you're right. You just go for the bomb here. Exactly. I think yeah, I would just go full face. Just look at Orange's face when he sees this right now. He just gives the <laughs> nod. Okay. He had it. Oh. Uh. So he's going to need. An ice block here if he wants to win this game. An uh, ice block a freeze would also him. do it, wouldn't it? Like a, a frost nova would probably save him at least one more turn. That is true. Um, but ice block would be the best, obviously, because frost bolt ice lands to face, and then ice block into pyroblast would be just a, a game winner right then and there. Frost bolt, I, that is not enough. Acolyte of pain, ping. The chance is real. It's possible. The dream is not dead. Dart, don't kill the dream before it's born. You're right, he has to do it. He has no other choice. He has to get Frostbolt. Or, no, I'm not, uh, he needs Frost Nova. Or Ice Block. Ice Block would obviously be the best, by a long shot, I think. Although Nova would also work. He's got, like, two outs left. Mm -hmm. So, Acolyte of Pain, Ping, Nova, and then you have to Frostbolt face for just three, I, I guess. I agree with that. Speak to me. Oh, man. He goes for it. This, is the, this determines the match series here. And Arcane Nail. <laughs> That does nothing. That is not enough. Wah, wah, wah. That card draw. You know what? I really like Gara's Hex on the first Mad Scientist. You know, just shutting out I Orange from any secrets that he really needs. I mean, against any matchup, if you don't have Ice Barrier or Ice Block, you're vulnerable to any type of, you know, board filling. If you don't have uh, Freeze to Freeze to Freeze to Secret, eventually you run out of removal and you will get punished for it. So, Gara with the good decision making on that Mad Scientist. Completely. And again, congratulations, Gara, for taking the first match of the first day of the Vulcan Deck Masters uh, tournament, powered by Square Series. Powered or, by sorry, Square, Square Series. Space. Square Race, Space, Square rather. Space. Right. Um, the second match we're going to have today is Show versus Surrender. Now, do you expect a similar lineup coming from both these players? I know Show is a bit more of a um, slow, I, I wouldn't say slower player. I guess he did pick up Hunter in the past. Uh, in the recent past, he used to be very, very exclusively a warrior player, but um, mm -hmm. he has so picked up a lot more tools to his uh, arsenal. So I can take a quick look at their lineup before we go for a quick break. We're going to have Show with Warlock, Hunter, and Druid right. against Surrender, who actually is a player that I'm not familiar with, bringing Rogue, Warrior, and Warlock himself. 
Yeah, apparently uh, Surrender is a South Korean player. I've actually I've looked him up on Gosu Gamers, and he participated in some event, um, and he did I think top four in it, as far as I recall. It's been I don't have much information on it. Of course, I'm not exactly uh, privy to all the you know the the scene on Asia. It's not a scene that I follow as closely as I do uh, NA. But uh, <laughs> we're gonna take a quick break and be right back with Show versus Surrender. Maybe we can see Surrender in action, and if he beats Show, that's definitely gonna be a good win. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. 